This might possibly be the nerdiest video I have ever made. We are merging my love of all things space with my love of Tay Tay. <laughs> We're gonna go through her two newest albums, Folklore and Evermore, and explain all of the space references therein. And once again, in classic Becky style, probably ruin it by making it educational, but I'm gonna have fun doing it. So I hope you do too, uh, and if not, I at least hope you learn something because, well, we're bringing the science today whilst dressed in our cozy Taylor Swift cardigans. So let's start with one that even casual listeners probably picked up on, Love You To The Moon and To Saturn from Seven on Folklore. Now, love you to the moon and back is a common phrase that people use to express how much they love someone. It comes from the book, Guess How Much I Love You by Sam McBratney, published in 1994. And it's likely that Taylor read that book as a child. And so the sentiment fits really well in here in this song with its motifs all about childhood. But Taylor takes it one step further with the line and to Saturn. So the moon's orbit isn't a perfect circle shape. So sometimes it's closer and that's when we get super moons and sometimes it's further away. At its furthest point, it's 405,696 kilometers away. But Saturn on average is about 1.6 billion kilometers away. That's about 4,000 times further away than the moon ever gets from Earth. So I think what Taylor is saying here is, I love you 4,000. Essentially, she just one-upped the kid in Avengers Endgame. I love you 3,000. Next up, rarer than the glimmer of a comet in the sky, long story short of Evermore. Now, Evermore was written in the summer of 2020 in the aftermath of the release of Folklore. And in July 2020, Comet Neowise was visible in the night sky for the majority of the Northern Hemisphere, both the UK and the US, where Taylor is known to split her time between. Now, this was all over the news at the time, and it's likely that Taylor actually went outside and spotted the comet for herself, as it was actually visible with the naked eye as just sort of like a little smudge in the sky, but it became even clearer, even just using a phone camera, and especially with sort of like a big camera on a long exposure as well. Now, comets are these sort of icy lumps of rock that are on these very long, very oval shaped orbits around the sun that take them all the way out to the far edges of the solar system and then back inwards towards the sun every couple of decades or even centuries. And when comets come back close to the sun, all that frozen ice melts and it releases gas that's trapped in these pockets in this big lump of rock. That gas streams out away from the sun and that's what we see when we see this sort of tail or smudge in the sky that makes these comets look so beautiful. But because they're on such massively long orbits, these big oval orbits around the sun, it can sometimes take decades for them to come back round. Like the incredibly bright Halley's Comet that was last seen in 1986 and won't be seen again until 2061. But Comet Neowise, which was the comet that was visible back in July 2020 when Taylor was writing Evermore, had an orbit that took 400,000 years to make one loop around the sun. So that's how long we would have had to wait to see it again. Hence the perfect line, rarer than the glimmer of a comet in the sky. Next up, Taylor wrote a line about my personal favorite thing to see in the night sky, which I affectionately refer to as a toenail moon, but other people would probably know as a crescent moon. She says on Ivy from Evermore, crescent moon coast is clear. So in this song, Ivy, Taylor and her lover are trying to avoid detection, right? And a night with a moon in its crescent phase is perfect for this, as opposed to a night with a full moon, which is incredibly, incredibly bright. I think we forget that with the amount of light pollution that's around. It was so bright that in autumn, people used to harvest crops by the light of the full moon. Even today in areas of no light pollution, you can actually get a moon shadow. The full moon is also up all night long, rising at sunset and setting at sunrise. But a crescent moon comes just before and after a new moon phase when the moon is on the day side of earth between the sun and the earth. So it never rises at night and you have a fully dark night. Crescent moons come either just before the new moon phase or just after the new moon phase, meaning we only ever see them for a little bit, like half an hour or an hour or so, just after sunset or just before sunrise, leaving the rest of the night, again, completely dark. 
So when she says in this song, Ivy, crescent moon, coast is clear, what she means is that there'll be a very dark night to hide her and her lover. Now, one of the recurring themes on both of the albums, Folklore and Evermore is stars. First on Cardigan, when she says, you drew stars around my scars. Now I love this line because to me, it means like taking something sad and making something good out of it. Kind of like a, like a rebirth of sorts. And I think stars are just the perfect metaphor for that because the majority of stars in our universe have formed where a previous generation of stars has already lived and died and gone supernova in one of these spectacular explosions and, and new stars have formed from that remnant gas and all the stuff that's left over. You know, you can't have the, the beauty of new stars without something having ended. Which I think is also perfectly represented by the line from Marjorie on Evermore. What died didn't stay dead. Now, stars representing dreams is also a recurring motif through the albums, including the stars in your eyes shined brighter in Tupelo from Dorothea on Evermore, and eyes full of stars hustling for the good life from Cowboy Like Me on Evermore. So to be starry-eyed or to have stars in your eyes has long been used to describe someone that is either hopeful for the future or has big dreams that are perhaps unobtainable. In, in the same way that the idiom um, reaching for the stars, right, is, is used to describe someone who's trying to attain something that is out of reach. And that's a sentiment that fits in perfectly with both Dorothea and Cowboy Like Me, but it's also astronomically correct as well, because the stars are really, really far away. Even the closest star to the sun, that's Proxima Centauri, is four light years away. That means it took light traveling at 30 million meters per second four years to make that journey. And it translates to about 38 trillion kilometers away. The most distant stars we can see with our eyes, without the use of telescopes at least, are the billions of stars in the Andromeda galaxy, 2.5 million light years away. That's 23 million trillion kilometers. If you want to try and spot it yourself tonight in the sky and you've got somewhere that's quite far away from light pollution, you should be able to see it as this little smudge that clearly isn't a star. You need to find the constellation Cassiopeia that looks like a W and move down from there. If you can't find it, don't worry, it is very faint. So what I'll do is I'll put some links in the video description below to some free star chart apps that you can download for your phone so that when you move the phone across the sky, it tells you exactly what you're looking at and you should be able to find it that way. Now, as a lover of stargazing and the night sky in general, the recurring theme that runs through these two albums of darkness and nightfall meaning heartbreak and then daylight meaning love kind of makes me a little bit sad. <laughs> For example, when the sun goes down on Coney Island on Evermore, my eclipsed sun from hoax on Folklore, and beyond the terror in the nightfall from happiness on Evermore. But to me, darkness and nightfall and even eclipses are things to be celebrated because they allow us to actually see the night sky and enjoy the beauty of stars and planets and, and galaxies. But beyond that, observing the night sky has allowed us to do science and, and figure out our place and location in the universe and even answer questions like, how old is the universe? And how did the universe begin? And to me, that is a gift that should be celebrated every single clear night just by looking up, even for a minute or a second. And of course, my favorite music to accompany a night stargazing <laughs> is Taylor Swift. I mean, I love my Taylor Swift cardigan, but it actually drowns me. Like, that is where my arm actually is. <laughs> Let's start with one that even the most casual of listeners, casual, casual? The stars in your eyes shine brighter in Tupelo? You ever said that out loud before? How did you sing it? The stars in your eyes shine brighter in Tupelo, Tupelo. Well, that sounds weird. I would say it, Tupelo. <laughs> I'm just butchering it with my northern accent. Can you imagine? The stars in your eyes shine brighter and top low. I'm coming in the sky. I fell through the rabbit hole. Long story short, it was a bad time. 